all right students the next chapter which we are going to start is the chapter of valuation under custom everyone let's go ahead and do the revision for the chapter of valuation now sir can you give us a quick linking yes baba let's go ahead and take a quick linking everyone over here now you went ahead and imported the goods once you go ahead and import the goods now you will have to go ahead and file your bill of entry when you file the bill of entry you will have to go ahead and do your self-assessment when you do the self-assessment you basically go ahead and calculate the custom duty and custom duty is equal to value into rate of duty into rate of exchange so in this chapter we are going to learn how to find out the value multiplied by how to what is the date what is the date of which rate of duty shall be applicable multiplied by the rate of exchange so we are also going to learn which date ka rate of exchange shall be applicable so the first chapter the fourth chapter which is valuation basically goes ahead and helps you in finding out the value now some basic things which you which you should know before going ahead and understanding the chapter always remember if goods are coming from us then we always call call us as the place of exportation if goods are coming to india then india becomes the place of importation okay sir point is clear now always remember the production cost plus the profit is known as the x factory price okay sir x factory price plus loading cost transportation local freight etc once it is paid and the goods reach alongside the ship means beside the ship is known as f a s free alongside the ship sir alongside the ship if if f a s value may you go ahead and add loading charges and you go ahead and add export duty it becomes f o b okay sir now f o b may if you go ahead and add the ocean freight basically the cost of transportation etc and the cost cost of import cost of insurance then you go ahead and get cost insurance and freight so basically fob plus insurance plus freight will give you cif value and cif is the value on which you have to pay custom duty okay sir point is clear always remember till the ship hits the port all the costs are to be included once the ship hits the port after that unloading charge indian port ka charges india ka port dues from here to take to your home sir from here to send to icd or cfs or transit transshipment cost will not be included okay sir point is clear cif is the value on which custom duty is payable now the first first chart over here which is valuation always remember for valuation under custom section number 14 is applicable section number 14 one talks about transaction value but transaction value is only applicable when tariff valuation is not applicable so if for your goods tariff value has been notified by the government then always on your goods you will have to go ahead and pay the duty based on tariff value sir for some notified goods the cbic goes ahead and notifies the tariff value example gold silver etc so if you go ahead and import gold silver etc then always always the duty shall be payable on the tariff value and not the transaction value but sir if my goods are those which are not notified then then baba section number 14 one goes ahead and says go ahead and pay the duty on the transaction value but before going ahead and accepting your transaction value you have to go ahead and follow some steps sir first of all what do you mean by transaction value transaction value means the price paid or payable the total price which you have gone ahead and paid to the person or you are going to pay to the person is known as the transaction value we are learning import valuation now okay sir so price actually paid or payable for goods when goods are sold for export to india for the delivery at the time and place of importation basically at the indian port means up to the indian port whatever is the value so we are talking about cif when the buyer and seller are 
unrelated only then you can go ahead and take the transaction value and price is the sole consideration so you have gone ahead and paid him only money price is the sole consideration okay sir then transaction value can be taken but once you have once you know the transaction value number one step is go ahead and file rule number 11 may one declaration so we are learning the import valuation along with the valuation rules okay sir rule number 11 goes ahead and says you should go ahead and file a declaration declaration by the importer or his agent about the uh, about the full and accurate disclosure of the value so basically when you go ahead and file your bill of entry you have to also go ahead and give a declaration about the full and accurate value sir at what price i have gone ahead and imported the goods now rule number 12 goes ahead and says if the proper officer has any doubt as to the truth and the accuracy of the value which you have gone ahead and declared then he will go ahead and ask you additional document evidences and after receiving those evidences and documents or if you don't go ahead and respond if po still has a doubt he will reject the transaction value then he will go ahead and do reassessment by applying the valuation rules okay sir sir can i go ahead and request the officer to go ahead and tell me the grounds why is he going ahead and rejecting yes baba if the request is given by the importer then up intimation of the ground for rejecting and he will also go ahead and provide you the opportunity of being heard okay sir sir but what are the reason why the po will go ahead and doubt the declaration given under rule number 11 always remember the po reason for the po to doubt the declaration given under rule number 11 can be many of them some of them are significantly higher value of identical goods and similar goods are there you are telling i imported iphone only at hundred dollar but proper officer is saying that identical goods are coming into india at thousand dollar five hundred dollars how come ramesh you are getting at such lower price he can go ahead and doubt you okay sir sir your sale involves abnormal and special discount how come ramesh you are so special to that guy who is the exporter sir definitely there is some problem how come your value is so low how come you are getting so much discount fraudulent or manipulated document if you have gone ahead and prescribed if the officer sees misdeclaration of goods in the parameter so the parameters which are required to be declared by you you have gone ahead and done some misdeclaration or if you have not gone ahead and declared no declaration non-declaration of the parameter then the po will go ahead and doubt the declared value under rule number 11 and under rule number 12 he will go ahead and reject the value and he will go ahead and do the reassessment by applying the valuation rule okay sir if the proper officer does not have a doubt then always remember you have to go ahead and fulfill rule number three sub rule two ka four condition if you go ahead and fulfill the four condition yes sir i fulfilled then your transaction value will become the estimable value on which you have to pay the duty but that will be subject to adjustment under rule number 10 okay sir point is clear sir what are the four conditions which are told under rule number 32 subject to which my transaction value will become the estimable value the four condition is no restriction as to the disposition or use by the buyer i have gone ahead and imported some goods there should not be any restriction it should be a it should be no restriction should be there as to how am i going to use the goods or how am i going to further sell of the goods so when there is no restriction then the transaction value can be accepted however there are some restrictions which are okay no problem even if you have this restriction then your transaction value will be accepted sir what are these restrictions this restriction i call gopal restriction sir what do you mean by gopal restriction sir g for g for geographical area ka restriction if you have if there is some restriction given by the exporter which is related to geographical area then no problem o for sir any other restriction which is not impacting the price p a public authority ka restriction that is also fine sir l for law ka restriction that is also fine always remember other than gopal restriction if any restriction is there then the officer will go ahead and say ramesh this goods has restriction i will not go ahead and accept the value which you have gone ahead and declared and the valuation rule shall be applied okay sir point is clear the next one over here is 
Sale is not subject to a condition for which value cannot be determined. It should be an unconditional sale. If there is any condition which is at attached to the uh, sale, then Baba officer will go ahead and say, I will not go ahead and accept this conditional sale and he will go ahead and apply the valuation rule and the value will be ascertained by applying the valuation rule. No subsequent sale proceed should be paid by you to the seller. So no subsequent sale proceed to accrue to the seller for which you are not able to do any adjustment. If you are not able to do any adjustment, please go ahead and find out the value by applying valuation rule. But sir, if I am able to know how much is the subsequent sale proceed going to be, then Baba don't worry, just add it to your transaction value. Okay, sir, point is clear. Then what is the fourth condition? The fourth condition under rule number three, sub rule two is the buyer and seller should be unrelated. If all the four conditions are satisfied, then always remember, if you have not gone ahead and violated rule number three, sub rule two, ka, any of the condition, then your transaction value will become the accessible value. Okay, sir. But one more thing over here is even if buyer and seller are unrelated, buyer and seller are related, still the transaction value will be accepted as the accessible value if rule number three, sub rule three ka condition is satisfied. Rule number three, sub rule three goes ahead and says even if buyer and seller are related, transaction value will be acceptable if relationship did not influence the price and also or you go ahead and demonstrate that the declared value sir whatever transaction value i am declaring that is closely approximating to the value declared under 4 5 7 and 8 basically officer even if you don't accept my transaction value you apply valuation rule still the value which i have gone ahead and declared that is only the value which will come as per the valuation rule also sir if if you go ahead and prove, then your even if buyer and seller are related, still the transaction value will become the accessible value. Okay, sir, point is clear. Sir, what do you mean by related person? Related person is simple. Scope plus family plus sole agent. Sir, scope, if one person is holding in both of them, B limited and C limited, more than equal to 25, uh, uh, in GST it is 25%, here it is 5%, in customs it is 5%. So, A limited holding in B and C only 5%. Then 5% or more, then B and C becomes related person. C for S for shares greater than equal to 5% in both of them. C for control. If one person is controlling another person, then both are related. Sir, for an example, B is controlling C or C is controlling B, then B and C are related. A is controlling B and C, then also B and C are related. B and C are controlling D, then also B and C are related. O for officer or director, P for partner, E for employer, employee and same family members are always related person. But sole agent is not a related person unless the sole agent falls in scope plus family means I, either of the point may a sole agent should fall only then the sole agent becomes a related person. Okay, sir. Sir, if rule number 3, 2 ka condition is satisfied, then rule number 3, 1 says a civil value is equal to transaction value, but that is subject to adjustment under rule 10. Okay, sir. Sir, if this rule 3, 2 ka condition is not satisfied, then Baba, if 3, 2 ka condition is not satisfied, then rule number 3, 4 goes ahead and says if value cannot be determined, under 3.1, basically your transaction value is not acceptable, then please go ahead and apply valuation rule. Everyone over here now, valuation rule may, the first rule which is there is rule number 4. Rule number 4 goes ahead and says, take the, if your goods ka value the officer is trying to find out, he will go ahead and take the transaction value of identical goods. So what do you mean by identical goods, sir? Identical goods means imported goods. Identical goods means imported goods not domestic goods so officer when he's trying to find out the value of your goods he will take identical goods ka value identical goods means those goods which are imported goods which are same in all respect except minor differences produced in the same country by the same or different person but does not include those imported goods with respect to which enzyme 
engineering or design work is undertaken in India by the buyer and it was provided by the buyer to the seller free of cost or at reduced cost. Okay, sir, point is clear. So, imported goods basically means which are same in all respect except minor difference produced in the same country by the same person or different person is also okay. So, when the officer is trying to find out the value of your goods, he will take the stable value of identical goods. Identical goods, which identical goods? Identical goods which were imported into India at or about the same time. Okay, sir, at the same commercial level or substantially same quantity or else different commercial level or quantity or both is also fine, but that is subject to adjustment. Then, sir, also he will go ahead and make, he will go ahead and make adjustment for freight and insurance if there is significant difference in the freight and insurance ka cost. So, uh, identical goods were imported in Chennai, your goods were imported in Goa, the freight and insurance could have been less. So, the identical goods ka transaction value say, he will go ahead and do the adjustment for your freight and insurance and then adopt the value for your goods. Okay, sir. Sir, if he goes ahead and identifies more than one transaction value, then lowest will be taken as the assible value. Sir, if the officer could not go ahead and find out the identical goods, then sir, if the officer could not go ahead and find out the identical goods, then he will go ahead and apply rule number five, transaction value of similar goods will be taken. Everything remains same in similar goods. The only difference between identical goods and similar goods is similar goods is not exactly same it is everything remains same it is but similar identical goods means it is same in all respect and similar goods are not alike in all respect but have like characteristic and like component or material enabling them to perform same comes function and commercially interchangeable so what is identical goods what is similar goods? Similar goods are also imported goods which are not alike in all respect but they perform the same function. They perform the same function. They are commercially interchangeable products. So, officer was trying to find out the value for your goods. He went to for search of identical goods. Identical goods he did not get. Then he will try to see if similar kinds of goods were imported in India that similar goods ka value will be adopted for your valuation. Rest everything remains the same. So, sir, value will be transaction value of similar goods imported at or about the same time. Rest, everything remains the same as rule number four. Basically, he will go ahead and see a transaction value of similar goods which were imported at or about the same time, same commercial level or same commercial level and substantially same quantity or else different commercial level is also fine but he will go ahead and make adjustment. He will also go ahead and make adjustment for freight and insurance if that is substantial plus also if more than one civil value or transaction value of similar goods is available, lowest will be taken. Okay, sir, point is clear. Rule number six. Rule number six is, sir, giving gyan, knowledge. It goes ahead and says, if you can't apply rule number three, rule number four or rule number five, basically your transaction value was not accepted, identical goods are not there, similar goods are not there, then Baba, go ahead and apply rule number seven and eight. But a very important point, which rule number six goes ahead and says it, is at the importer's request and the proper officer approval, Order can be that, sir, prop, sir, at importer's request and proper officer ka approval, order can be changed. You can apply 8 first and then 7. Okay, sir. Sir, what is rule number 7? Rule number 7 says, a civil value shall be deducted value. Sir, what do you mean by deducted value? India ka resale price will be taken. All the Indian expenses will be deducted and the port ka value will be arrived at. So, India ka resale price minus all the commission, profit, general expenses in India. Sir, cost of transportation, cost of insurance in India. India, whatever is the custom duty and taxes paid in India, all will be deducted and the port ka value will be identified. So, basically, resale unit price of the imported goods or the identical goods or similar goods in the greatest aggregate quantity. Be very careful. Greatest aggregate quantity may, what is the selling price? That will be taken. 
So resale unit price in the greatest aggregate quantity to unregistered person that will be taken less the commission paid in India, profit made, the general expenses, processing cost incurred in India, less cost of transportation, cost of insurance and associated cost and custom duties and other taxes paid in India, you will arrive at the assessable value. This assessable value is the port ka value and that will become the assessable value on which your officer will go ahead and calculate the duty. Okay, sir. Sir, if resale price, India ka resale price is not available, then is not available at or about the same time, then officer will tell, let's go ahead and wait for 90 days and then the valuation will be done. Unit price at the earliest date after importation but before the expiry of 90 days. Okay, sir. Point is clear. Rule number 8 goes ahead and talks about a civil value is equal to computed value. Sir, what do you mean by computed value? Basically, officer will go ahead and compute the value in this rule. What happens? For an example, my parent company went ahead and gave me some goods. Those goods are not being sold in India anywhere. Then what to do? Rule number 7 can't be applied. In that scenario, they are going ahead and telling, take their cost of manufacturing, take their processing expense, their profit, their general expense, on the way ka cost of transportation, on the way ka cost of insurance and you arrive at the India ka value. So basically at the Indian port, how will you calculate the value? You will compute their cost of material, their processing expense, their profit, their, pro, uh, their expenses up to the port. Then on the way ka cost of transportation, cost of insurance and Indian port ka value shall be arrived at. So cost of material, processing cost, pro profit, general expense up to the port of origin, cost of transportation, cost of insurance by applying rule number 10 to, okay sir, rule number 9 goes ahead and says, rule number 9, Rule number 9 goes ahead and says a civil value is equal to value by applying residual method. Rule number 9 just goes ahead and says a civil value is equal to value by applying residual method. What do you mean by residual method? Baba, if you can't go ahead and apply rule number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, anywhere you are not able to apply, then they are telling you can determine the value by applying brain. Residual method says value are determined using Reasonable means consistent with the principles and general provisions of the rule and on the basis of data available in India. But sir, there are some basis which can't be the basis for you to go ahead and determine the value by applying rule number 9. So when you are applying rule number 9 may your brain, they are telling don't go ahead and take all these basis as the basis for your value determination. Sir, under rule number 9, residual method for value determination following shall not be the value. Number one, minimum custom value, machos D, machos D, you have to remember, machos D, M for minimum custom values. Sir, minimum custom values will be taken. No, Baba, minimum custom values can't be taken. Arbitrary or fictitious value can't be taken. Cost of production, other than rule number eight, officer is telling, I'll apply my method of calculating cost of production. You can't do that. Then H for highest of two alternatives. Officer is telling inky, pinky, funky, whichever is the highest, I'll take. No, you can't do that. O for in, sir, selling price of those goods. O for selling price of those goods other than the country, other than India. So basically, the country from where the goods have come, the country is going ahead and selling in other country also. Other country ka selling price can't be taken for our valuation. Okay, sir, selling price of Indian goods. S for selling price of Indian goods can't be taken and D for domestic market price in the exporting country that can't be taken as the basis. Okay, sir, point is clear. Always remember everyone, if rule number 3 to ka condition is satisfied, then you can go ahead and take, you can go ahead and take whatever was the transaction value which you declared as the assessable value, but that is subject to adjustment under rule number 10 1 and 10 2 everyone over here so how will you go ahead and do the adjustment do one thing everyone take the fob value then rule number 10 ka one ka adjustment you do rule 10 1 may there is a b c d e sir what is rule number 10 1 a rule number 10 1 a basically goes ahead and says do the adjustment for commission packing and container okay sir 
then rule number 10 1b goes ahead and says i need additional consideration or assistance if you had gone ahead and given might be material you gave might be consumables you gave might be mold and dyes you gave their value will be apportioned and be added royalty and license 10 1c goes ahead and says royalties and license 10 1d says subsequent sale proceeds should be added and 10 1e any other payment if you have gone ahead and done that also should be added and you will arrive at adjusted fob in adjusted fob 10 to a and 10 to b basically cost of transportation has to be adjusted and then cost of insurance and you will get the cif on the cif you will have to go ahead and pay the custom duty now in the next chart everyone determination of assessable value basically this fob to calculation of your cif i have gone ahead and written down in detail everyone over here now determination of assessable value always remember you have to go ahead and start your question from x factory okay sir please take the x factory first of all then then you go ahead and add freight insurance all expenses up to the port of origin and you will arrive at fas okay sir then then what to do sir then you go ahead and add loading charges export duty you will arrive at the fob now 101 ka adjustment is there sir what is rule number 101 ka adjustment 101 a goes ahead and says the following incurred by the buyer and not included in the price paid or payable shall be added number 1 commission and brokerage please go ahead and add all commission including local agent or exporters agent who is in india basically that agent ka commission has to be included mind it over here sir only if these things are not included in the transaction value you have to go ahead and include okay sir point is clear then then it says over here sir always remember buying commission paid by the buyer to his agent should not be included cost of container also please go ahead and include except the cost of durable and returnable container whichever returnable and durable containers are there their cost should not be added then we have cost of packing always go ahead and add the cost of packing whether it is for labor or it is for material you have to go ahead and include then we have section number 101b which goes ahead and says whatever assistance you have gone ahead and given to the seller has to be included assistance by the importer to the supplier free of cost or at reduced cost has to be included sir what are the various assistant i can go ahead and give if you had gone ahead and given any raw material sir material including raw material component part or item which basically come back to you incorporated in the imported goods that is to be included always remember everyone here you have to go at 101b me always whatever is the amount that is to be a portion between the goods which are going to be imported okay add the value a portion as appropriate okay then i have gone ahead and given some tools dies molds etc which are basically used by the exporter in the production then that is also to be included a portion amount to be included sir i gave him some consumable material consumed in the production also has to be added then engineering design development artwork which was undertaken elsewhere than in india has to be included 101 c goes ahead and says royalties and license fees relating to the imported goods which the buyer is required to pay to the seller also has to be included but here always remember include payment with respect to patent trademark copyright process might be undertaken after import but because you are going ahead and paying it with respect to the goods which you have imported you have to go ahead and add the royalty and license fees then we have 101d value of any part of the subsequent resale subsequent sale proceed has to be also added always remember dividends are never subsequent sale proceed and dividends shall not be included 101e goes ahead and says any other payment all other payment which is made as a condition of sale to the seller or the third party so if i have gone ahead and paid any obligation of the seller paid by the recipient i have to go ahead and add it in the value and i'll arrive at the adjusted fob 101 a 101 b 101 c 101 d and 101 e ka adjustment 101 a baba fob fob me 101 a ka adjustment sir commission container packing 
101 b ka adjustment whatever you have given him assistant that amount a portion and added 101 c ka adjustment royalties and license fees 101 d ka adjustment subsequent resale subsequent sale proceed 10 101 d is subsequent uh, sale proceed and 101 e is any other payment if you are going ahead and giving him which is a condition of sale that is also to be included okay sir point is clear then now you will arrive at the adjusted fob from fob if you do 10 one card adjustment you will arrive at 10 you will arrive at the adjusted fob now please go ahead and add 10 to 10 to a and 10 to b ka point 10 to a goes ahead and says cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges up to the place of importation if you have actual at actual if you don't have actual 20 percent of the adjusted fob should be included but be very careful over here in case of air the maximum amount you can add is 20 percent so in case of air we compare we compare actual or 20 percent whichever is lower and included okay sir cost of insurance always remember cost of insurance you will go ahead and include actual actual is unavailable then you will go ahead and include 1.125 percent of the adjusted fob and you will arrive at the cif now always remember cost of transportation up to the place of importation is always includable ship demerage barge light rate charges are basically to be included in the cost of transportation but if you have gone ahead and taken the transportation cost on actual basis only then add it if you have gone ahead and taken 20 percent then all the ship demerit charges but light rate charges are already deemed to be included never go ahead and add transportation to icd cfs one port in india to icd port to another port port to container freight station airport to airport transit transshipment charges any other transportation charges which are incurred in india never included do not add india ka port charges india ka handling charges port pay if there is any demerit charges which are paid at the indian port never included there is one note over here if exam may they go ahead and give you combined fob which is fob plus insurance then take 20 percent of the combined fob if in the exam they go ahead and give you combined fob which is fob plus transportation together one amount then take combined fob ka cost of insurance is equal to 1.125 percent of the combined fob okay sir point is clear everyone always remember earlier there was something called a landing charges which was included now landing charges are no more includable okay sir one more point which i want to you guys to be very careful in case of air whenever you go ahead and compare actual or 20 percent of the adjusted fob then always remember one thing cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges associated with the delivery take it from the us from us till the indian port whatever cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges are there that you have to go ahead actual has to be compared with 20 percent of the adjusted fob and always take whichever is lower it means always remember one thing if you go ahead and take if you go ahead and take 20 percent of the adjusted fob then always assume that from the us from us to from the us the exporters factory to the indian up to the indian port whatever is the cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges is included in the 20 percent and please don't go ahead and add it above okay sir point is clear so above when you are going in and adding the loading charges and uh, transportation charges etc those are to be removed if you are going ahead and taking what 20 percent of the adjusted fob as your cost of transportation okay sir point is clear then there are some additional points which you have to remember always in the exam whenever you are going ahead and starting your answer please try to start with fob so that you are always correct okay sir then any duties and taxes incurred in india never included service charges of channelizing agent that is never buying it is not a buying commission please always include it service charges to channelizing agent are always to be included okay sir point is clear demerit charges paid for delay in clearing from the port 
is not to be included. Always remember there are two types of demurrages. One is the mother vessel which is happening in which is standing in the sea and there are small boats which are used for getting the goods. That time the mother vessel because it is parked in the sea there is ship demurrage charges. Ship demurrage charges are includable because they are includable in cost of transportation okay but Indian port may whatever demerit charges are there because your goods were lying in the Indian port there are demerit charges those are never to be included okay sir point is clear then the next one over here is Huh. That's it over here. So always remember one thing expect the price then you go ahead and add freight insurance You will get FAS once free alongside has come add loading charges export duty You will get FOB FOB may 10 1 a b c d e ka adjustment You will get adjusted FOB adjusted FOB may 10 to a and 10 to b which is cost of transportation and cost of insurance you go ahead and add it always remember cost of transportation actual is given take actual actual is not given take 20 percent always remember in case of air compare actual to 20 percent and take whichever is lower cost of insurance if actual is given take actual if actual is not given take 1.125 percent whether air whether ship whether whether air, whether ship or whether vehicle, road transportation. Okay, sir, point is clear. Now, the next chart over here is a summary of the rate of duty. Always remember one thing, everyone. Now, we went ahead and learned section number 14. Section number 14 ka proviso goes ahead and tells you about rate of exchange. Okay, and section number 15 and 16 talks about the rate of duty. Which date ka rate of duty and which date ka rate of exchange. Why sir, why do we need rate of duty and rate of exchange? Everyone over here, custom duty is equal to value which we have just now went ahead and learned which is the CI value after adjustment under 10.1 and 10.2. Okay sir, once you get the value multiplied by rate of duty, which date ka rate of duty has to be taken? That is told by section number 15 for import valuation. For export, section number 16 addresses the matter and multiplied by rate of exchange. Rate of exchange, always remember, please take the CBIC ka notified rate of exchange. In the exam, they will go ahead and tell you SBI, RBI and all. Kindly ignore them. Okay, sir, point is clear. Now, once you get the... Now, how do you go ahead and find out which date ka rate of duty and which date ka rate of exchange? Everyone over here. If goods are cleared for home consumption, that is, it is a matter of direct clearance and goods are imported by vessel. You have to take bill of entry, filing date or entry in word, whichever is later. Take later. Okay, sir. Then if goods are imported by aircraft or vehicle, take bill of entry or arrival date, whichever is later. Okay, sir. Point is clear. Goods cleared for warehousing means indirect clearance. First, you will file an into bond bill of entry. Then you file an ex bond bill of entry into or ex which is later ex bond and hence date of filing ex bond bill of entry which is green in color then sir if goods are entered for export first you file a shipping bill and then the officer gives you a late export order so shipping bill or late export order which is later late export order so baba date of late export order shall be taken in any other case go ahead and take date of payment date ka rate of duty okay sir point is clear rate of exchange may always remember Always remember everyone, see it is bill of entry, it means the first bill of entry, it means the first bill of entry in case of goods which are directly cleared, means direct clearance, home consumption ke liye if you have done, always take bill of entry ka filing date. Okay sir, here it is ex bond bill of entry, so first you file into bond and then you file ex bond, no, so please take into bond bill of entry ka date for rate of exchange sir first you file shipping bill and then the officer gives let export order no take the shipping bill ka date as the day uh, for the rate of exchange okay sir then date of payment of duty and date of payment of duty in any other case always remember these provisions which i have told you are not applicable if in case of baggage and when the import is happening by post or courier because for them Special provisions are already there. Okay, sir. Point is clear. Next.
then we have over here say uh, okay before i go ahead i want to go ahead and tell you guys that you can write one small point always remember i taught you just now import valuation if you have to do export valuation same value you have to go ahead and take Sir, value is told under section number 14, but here don't take the CIF value. You have to take the FOB value, okay, multiplied by the rate of exchange. When you go ahead and multiply it by the rate of exchange, I have told you rate of exchange related story already over here. Take the shipping bill ka date ka rate of exchange multiplied by the rate of duty. Always remember, then you will get the, you will get your export duty. And in the export duty, never add social welfare surcharge. Okay, sir, point is clear. How do you go ahead and do the export ka goods ka valuation? Nothing. Always take the FOB multiplied by rate of exchange into rate of duty will give you the export duty. And sir, in exports, don't add social welfare surcharge. There is one additional section over here, section number 19, which goes ahead and talks about special provision for classification of set of articles or accessories. So, if you have gone ahead, if you have some set of articles which you have gone ahead and imported together, how to do the valuation that is being told over here. Sir, if articles are liable to duty with reference to quantity, then they are chargeable to that duty. I would like to go ahead and tell you like this. For an example, I went ahead and imported shaving kit of 500 rupees. In the shaving kit, there is shaving cream, brush, razor and shaving lotion and the duty which is chargeable on this item is with reference to quantity, unit wise duty. So in the shaving kit, there is one unit shaving cream, uh, in the shaving kit, there is one unit of shaving cream, one unit of brush, one unit of razor and one unit of shaving lotion. Then the rate of duty is already told 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 30 rupees and 40 rupees respectively. Then just add the amount and you will get the custom duty okay sir the second case over here is if articles are liable to duty with reference to value value on the value they have told a percentage and all are liable to the same rate then they are going ahead and telling so supposingly you have gone ahead and got a shaving kit in that on all the item 10 percent rate of duty is there then on the shaving kit 10 percent rate will be applicable directly okay sir point is clear next sir a Articles are liable to duty with reference to value and also liable at different rate. So, sir, if I have gone ahead and imported a shaving kit and in that every item is chargeable with different rate, then do one thing on the 500 rupees, which is the shaving kit ka value, apply the highest rate of duty. Okay, sir, point is clear. Then, sir, if articles are not liable to duty, Supposingly, in the saving kit, one item is not liable to duty, then, sir, then also on the total saving kit, go ahead and apply whatever is the rate applicable to the remaining item. If remaining item is chargeable at the same rate, then apply only that rate. Okay, sir. Sir, if remaining items are chargeable at different rate, then go ahead and apply the highest rate. That is being told over here. Sir, if any article is not liable to duty, then it shall be chargeable to the duty at the rate at which articles liable to duty with reference to value are liable under clause B. Basically, if same rate, then apply the same rate on the whole amount. If different rates, then apply the highest rate. Okay, sir, if I have gone ahead and imported something and along with that, accessories, parts and implements also have come, then how to go ahead and what rate will be applicable on the accessory they have gone ahead and told if accessories parts and implements are compulsorily supplied along and no separate charges then main article and the accessories part or implement shall be chargeable at the same rate of duty for an example mobile phone and the charger has come and the charger is compulsorily supplied along what is the rate applicable on the charger they are telling the main article ka rate will be applicable on the accessories also. Sir, if the accessories, parts or implement are compulsory supplied and charges are taken separately for the accessories, then Baba, on the main article, main article ka rate and accessories pay, accessories ka rate will be applicable. Main article and accessories, part or implement chargeable at their individual rate. Sir, if accessories, parts and implement are optionally supplied 
along. I mean, they are, they are not supplied compulsorily and no separate charges. Then Baba always remember main article and accessories, parts and implements will be chargeable at highest rate. If accessories, parts and implement are optionally supplied along and charged also separately, then Baba separate, separate item, separate, separate rate, main article, accessories, parts and implement chargeable at their respective rate. Here we are done with your valuation under custom people. This is a very important chapter. One six mark question. They are 100% going to ask. I'll go ahead and close my revision on valuation under customs over here everyone.